today we are going to talk about functions. Um, it's such an important part of our personality. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into INFJ functions and also INFJ shadow functions. So before we talk about functions, I kind of want to explain a little bit what they are. The letters INFJ, let's start with the letters INFJ. The letters are called preferences. So these are the things that we prefer. Like we prefer, we're introverted, so we get our, um, we get our energy from being by ourselves, right? We are intuitive, we are feeling, um, those are how we make decisions. Those are how we see the world. And judging is kind of our organizational patterns as well. Those are, they help us understand our personality type and they give us basically a general understanding of who we are and how we operate. But that's really only half of the story. The other half of the story are called functions. Now, this is something that Carl Jung came up with. Um, he is actually one of the people who invented what we call psychology now. And his work is what the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator personality test is based off of. So he said that there are eight basic functions. You have um, sensing, intuition, thinking, and feeling. So that's four, right? But each one of them can be either introverted or extroverted. So when one of these things is introverted, that means that it's focused inside of you. But when it's extroverted, that means it's focused outside of you. So it's focused on other people. So we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about what each one of these things mean. Um, when we talk about our functional stack, each personality type has four different functions and they kind of go in order. So you have the dominant function, which is the one that you have the most of. It's the biggest part of your personality. The next in line below that is called the auxiliary function. This one is kind of like the sidekick to the dominant function. It's not quite as strong as the dominant one, but it's right there with the dominant one. The bottom two are a lot less developed. Um, the next one down is called tertiary, and the last one is inferior. And how much of those you have really depends on how developed your personality is. So how much time you spend developing those. A lot of people barely even notice those. So for INFJs, our dominant function is introverted intuition. Our auxiliary function is extroverted feeling. Our tertiary function is introverted thinking and our inferior function is extroverted sensing. So let's go through what each one of these means. The dominant one is called introverted intuition. And that means that we explore ideas and possibilities that come from inside of us. They come from our own minds. This introverted intuition for us is the ability to just know things. We take in a lot of information from each one of our senses and all of this happens almost unconsciously or subconsciously. We don't know that we're doing this. All we know is that we know things. Some people refer to it as like, deja vu, like that feeling of I've been here before, I've seen this before, like I know what happens, almost like you're watching a movie and you're like, wait a minute, I've seen this movie before, right? I know exactly what's going to happen, but you really haven't been there before. You just know what's going to happen. There's a lot of people who don't experience intuition or it's one of their bottom two functions. And so they really don't know what it is. And so for them, it feels like it's something kind of magical or spiritual. 
And there are some INFJs that are, that claim to be fortune tellers. Maybe they are. I, I'm not one. I've never met one personally that is. Um, I've had some people on Instagram tell me that they are. I have definitely had that feeling of deja vu, like I've been here before. A lot of times what happens to me is I'll meet somebody new and I'll get this feeling of, ooh, you're not really a good person. And I don't know why, I just don't like you. And then I'll find out later that they really weren't a good person. And it was a good thing that I stayed away from them. Sometimes I'll get a feeling when I'm talking to somebody that they're lying. And it's not like an outright blatant lie. It's just like, a this doesn't really feel right. Something feels off here. And I've gotten kind of bold in that where I'll call them out and be like, that's not right. You're not, you're not, what you're telling me is not right. Um, my niece was telling me this story one time and she's like, this is what happened. I, I went to this creek with one of my friends and we fell in the creek and I got hurt. And I'm like, okay, like thinking in my head that kind of makes sense because there was a creek where she lived and I used to live there and we used to go walking in the creek a lot. So this is a plausible story. But I just had this feeling that it wasn't right. And so I said to her, like, as she's telling me this creek story, I'm like, this is about a guy, isn't it? Like you met some guy and you went out with the guy, right? And she just like stopped. And she's like, how did you know that? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I just know. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I just know, but I knew I was right. It was not about a creek. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so there are times like that. It, the funny part for me is that my intuition usually revolves around other people. And I really am convinced that that's because that our intro introverted intuition, which is our dominant function, it works alongside of our auxiliary function, which is extroverted feeling. So our extroverted feeling is it helps us relate to other people you have to think of it as like your feelings. Um, when we said that it's extroverted, that means that it, it's not our internal feelings, but it's the feelings of other people, right? So we soak up the emotions of people around us. We do that extremely well. We know how other people are feeling, even if we haven't been through what they're going through. We can literally feel what's coming off of them whether you call it energy or vibration, however you believe, we can feel their feelings. Sometimes we even get on the same level where we can think the exact, that, the exact same thing that they're thinking, right? So when you combine that with this introverted intuition, this almost super natural power to be able to see the future, or to, to just know things, then you don't just know things about yourself, you know things about other people too. That's usually where most of mine is focused. Sometimes with my intuition, I like to think about things that could happen in the, in the future. Most of my thought process is focused on what could happen. What do I want to happen? And I really believe in the power of manifestation, but as INFJs, we also have this ability to dream and then to be able to work for those things. So I feel like there have been some things that I have literally dreamed into life. Like I wanted them so bad that they appeared in my life. And that didn't, that doesn't mean that I was just sitting around doing nothing. I was dreaming about those things and then thinking, okay, how do I get this to work? Like, what are the steps to make this actually work? 
one of those things was I really wanted this career working around race cars. I absolutely loved race cars. And when I was in high school, that was so far away from me because I lived 1500 miles away from where all the race shops were. And I know I knew absolutely nothing about how to move halfway across the country. I didn't know anybody who worked in racing. So I started asking a lot of questions. And then I decided that I needed to be in North Carolina where all the race shops were. So then it's like, okay, I wanna move. How do I move? What are the steps to moving? What do I need to do? How much money do I need to have? How can I make this work? And so step-by-step, I did all of those things that put me in the right position to be able to have a career like that. And then fortunately enough for me, it actually happened. Um, So sometimes manifestation is just putting something out there in the universe, right? Saying, hey, I'd really like for this thing to happen. But then I also think that there's another step to it, which is which is working, doing the work that it takes to get that thing. Um, So part of that is intuition, right? It's knowing what could happen and being a part of the process. Um, We talked a little bit about extroverted feelings. So that's feeling other people's feelings. This helps us in so many ways. It helps us relate to other people to see things from their point of view. It helps us to be able to connect with people and it helps us to be able to give them advice. Um, We can feel what they're feeling, but then we can also see things that they can't see. We are incredibly talented at looking into the future and seeing the possibilities of what could happen, right? So, This makes us great counselors. It also makes us really good negotiators and peacemakers because we can see things from all different sides. We can see things from everybody's point of view. A lot of us naturally fall into this position, especially if there's a lot of people in your house when you were growing up. Um, At one point, there was almost 10 people in our house growing up (laughs) and I fell into that position a lot. Um, so I think practice also helps with that. Um, but being able to feel other people's feelings helps that too. Now, feeling other people's feelings can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing, right? When you're around people who are happy and driven and excited about life, you soak all of that up and it makes you want to be happy and driven and excited. But when you're around people who are negative and and mean and bitter, you also soak all of that up too. So that becomes almost a part of who you are because a lot of times, especially when, when we're young, it's hard for us to separate our feelings with the feelings that are coming off of other people. I didn't really understand this until I moved out of my parents' house. When I moved out and I was completely on my own, I felt relief. I didn't know anything about personality types back then. I wish that I would have, it would have explained a lot for me. I just remember feeling relief. I was finally able to be calm and peaceful without worrying about anybody else. When you live in a house with so many other people, there's constantly something going on. And when two or three of them are extroverts, they always want to be the center of attention. They always, they always want to do something. They want to be involved in something. And a lot of times they clash with each other. So there's drama. And it's like constant. It never ends. And then you throw a baby into the mix, you know, who's obviously babies are pretty needy, you know, they cry a lot. And all of that just wears on your senses. And if you never get a break, you're never in a quiet place. 
you throw on top of that, that I worked in retail. I worked at Walmart and I was working two jobs too. I had an office job during the day. There was a disaster because everybody there was, they were all outgoing salespeople. So I'd spend eight hours a day there. And then I would go to Walmart and work in retail for another four to five hours. <laughs> and it was, it was a lot to deal with, you know? But once I moved out, I had that peace. Just stepping away from people made such a huge, huge difference for me. Um, so that's definitely something to think about and to remember. Um, I think I should have started too with why functions are important. I talked a little bit about how preferences are only half of your personality type, right? So your functions will help you understand so much more about yourself and how you relate to others. Um, and it's important to understand these things, especially when you're struggling with different things, because the more that you understand, the more that you can see how things work. And then you can say, okay, here's what I need to change. Here's where the problem is. One of the biggest problems that I've had also comes from this extroverted feeling function is soaking up other people's emotions. And it's not just the people that I live with. It can be like people in the grocery store, right? I hate going to the grocery store, especially where I live now, just outside of Boston. There's so many people in such a small space. So when I was growing up in the Midwest, you could go to the grocery store and there would be like two people in there in this huge store. But here, it doesn't matter what time of day that you go, there's always a ton of people in there. The only time that I found where there's like the least amount of people is on Friday night. And I usually don't want to go to the grocery store on Friday night. So I just deal with the people being there. But it's difficult because it's like each one of them has a different emotion, right? Some of them are really angry. Some of them are happy. Some of them are loud. Sometimes there's kids running around. And nowadays you have to deal with people looking at you because you don't have a mask on. I'll confess, I don't wear masks in the grocery store. One, because I have severe asthma and it's really difficult for me to breathe. And so if I'm not forced to wear one, I'm not gonna wear one. And two, because I really don't believe that they make a difference, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> that's a whole nother topic. But anyway, I'll abide by the law if it says I have to wear a mask. But since they've lifted that here and it says I don't have to wear a mask, then I'm not going to wear one. And I am so not a part of the whole social shaming thing. And I'm not going to let other people shame me. But that doesn't take away from the fact that people still give you these looks, you know, and it's like, you want to be like, I really don't care, but you know, you see the look and you're like, oh, don't soak up those feelings. Keep moving. It's a lot to deal with just to get groceries, right? It helps me so much though, just to understand that this is a part of my personality and this is how it works. And there are things that you can do to try not to soak up those emotions. Obviously, I limit the amount of time that I'm in a grocery store. I don't want to be there. It's not a fun experience for me. Um, but it helps me when I'm standing there and there's somebody who is angry or they're giving me a weird look or something. It helps me in that moment to recognize, oh, wait a second. This is just a natural process here. I don't need to actively be a part of this. I can almost push their emotions away from me. I can sit there in that moment and say, this isn't my emotion. I don't need to take this on. This doesn't need to be a part of something that I'm worried about today. I can set it down. It doesn't belong to me. It helps a lot to be able to move on from that. Okay, so the next one is our tertiary function. I hope I'm saying that right. It doesn't feel right, but I Googled it and that's what it said. So hopefully that's right. Um, it's the third function and it's called introverted thinking. So introverted thinking is the ability to reason things out in your mind. 
so rationally and logically. It helps us to navigate our intuition and our feelings and to look at them from a logical perspective. INFJs are pretty rare because we are one of the few personality types that uses both the thinking and the feeling sides of our brains. Most personalities are either 100% thinking or 100% feeling. So it's pretty rare for us to be able to use both sides of our brain. And this, this introverted thinking function plays a huge part in that. So the more developed this function is, the more rational you will be able to be. It can be a really good thing because you don't, you don't really want to be driven 100% by how you feel, especially if you have anxiety. <laughs> a lot of INFJs have anxiety, me included. Um, and it's very easy to get carried down a road with anxiety and being so worried about how you feel that you lose sight of things that are logical and rational. So it's a really good thing that we have that ability to balance these things out. It helps us see things from other people's perspectives, but it also helps us to be able to connect with people who are thinking. Um, some people really don't they don't feel emotions the same way that we do. They don't even consider emotions the same way that we do because they're, they're feeling, maybe their feeling function is so low in their stack and it's just so undeveloped that they don't even think about people's feelings. They think logic and that's it. So it helps us to be able to connect with those people and to be able to see things from their perspective a little bit more. The downside of this function is that it can cause us to doubt our intuition. It can cause us to doubt the things that we feel about other people. Um, a lot of times it can cause us to doubt some of the feelings that we get about ourselves. I, I have a couple examples of this. So um, I was talking earlier about, earlier about my dream job I moved to North Carolina and I was there for about six years. I worked in my dream job for about three years. And then I left that job and I went to work at a different job. And I was really extremely miserable in that job. And I really wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. And so it was kind of this crisis time in my life. I was only in that job for about five months and then I got laid off. And to me, it felt like a sign because I really felt like my time in North Carolina was up. And when I talk to other people, when I tell them, you know, a lot of people ask me, why did you leave North Carolina? Why don't you work in racing anymore? And when I say, I really felt like my time was, there was up, they look at me like I have two heads or like I'm crazy. Like, well, you just didn't work hard enough. Or you could still be doing something that's really cool and awesome like that. But the way that I see it is my intuition was telling me that I needed to be somewhere else. And I just felt like that was the right thing to do. Now, when, you're, when you consider this from a perspective of logical thinking, is it really logical to say, well, I just felt like I should leave? No, that's why other people are saying, you know, hey, why didn't you try harder? Why did you leave? That's a really nice place to live. You could have worked in a hundred different careers. There are tons of places that you could work there. They don't understand the feeling side of things, right? And when you consider that feeling of, hey, I feel like my time is up, that can also cause you, when you use your, introver your introverted thinking too much, that can cause you to doubt those types of intuitions. Another one for me was I wanted to move to Boston. I didn't know why, I just knew that I wanted to be here. 
and my family being logical were like why that doesn't make any sense boston is incredibly expensive you don't know anybody there that doesn't like that it just doesn't make logical sense so when i went looking for a job i applied for 10 or 12 jobs i think and i got five or six phone interviews and then i had two in person interviews and i used my whole paycheck to buy a plane ticket to go to these two interviews and my parents are like you are insane what are you doing this for this is not going to work and you're just wasting your money and i was like i don't know i just feel like i'm supposed to do this and i feel like the fact that i got two interviews out of like 10 job applications is a huge sign because prior to that i had been looking for a job for a year and a half and i really hadn't gotten a whole lot So then that didn't work out. I wasn't offered it either one of those jobs. And they're like, see, I told you so. You just wasted a thousand dollars. And like two weeks later, I got one more in-person interview. And I was like, I have to go. I just really feel like I have to go. So I spent the whole next paycheck on another plane ticket. And I went to Boston. And I remember walking into the place uh, where my interview was and I saw there was this little heater sitting on the floor and that heater was made by the company that my dad used to work for. He had worked there for 25 years. And I just saw that as a sign. Like to me, I just knew at that moment that I was gonna get that job and that was gonna work out. And I did, I got that job. And it worked out. It turned out to be one of the worst jobs that I've ever had, <laughs> but, but it got me to Boston and I was able to move here and everything worked out from that point. To me, that was part of my intuition. Those things that I see as signs are as part of my intuition saying, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. You're on the right track. Like I said, does it make logical sense? No, it doesn't really make logical sense. But for me, I've learned to listen to those feelings and to follow them, even if it doesn't make logical sense. So when you're talking about your introverted thinking function, this is something that you have to develop a little bit, but it's also something that you have to be careful of because it can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing for you as well. Okay, so the last function is your inferior function, which is extroverted sensing. So this one is the absolute least used function. And for a lot of INFJs, it really never gets developed very much. A lot of INFJs, the majority that I've spoken to, myself included, we have this struggle when we're growing up of we want to find our purpose. Um, we want to make the right decisions. We don't want to make any wrong decisions. We also struggle a lot with our life partner, our significant other. We want to make really good decisions, right? So often our main function, which is our introverted intuition, will almost be at war with our lowest function, the extroverted sensing. And sometimes we can make some really questionable choices when it comes to some of these decisions that we have to make because it's almost like they're fighting with each other, right? Um, as we grow up, this function, this extroverted sensing, it really takes a little bit of work and development in order for us to use it. And a lot of times when we're struggling, the problem is, is that we haven't tapped into our extroverted sensing. So extroverted sensing is the ability to be present, to notice things around you and to pay attention to details. INFJs in general have a great, great problem with this because our main function is introverted intuition, right? We like to live in our heads. We like to think about the future. We like to use our imagination. We have this amazing and wonderful imagination, which helps so much with our intuition. 
So we're not interested in the here and the now and the what's in front of us, right? A lot of those types of things are overwhelming for us. Um, if you're highly sensitive, like I am, then you don't want to be around things that are loud and that smell vicious and you don't want to be around a bunch of other people because usually all of the scenting type of things there's a bunch of people around um so that's why we tend to avoid those things we like to stay home and read books right um that doesn't require a lot of extroverted sensing some of us get so wrapped up in projects that we forget how, we forget that we need to eat um all of those things are sensing type of things right so you think about things like going out to eat going to watch a movie um going to concerts um any type of place where you're around other people where you're using your senses a lot of those things they can be overwhelming for us so we tend to avoid those types of things but like I said, if you're really struggling with something, a good place to go look is at those types of things. Have you engaged your extroverted sensing? How long has it been? How long has it been since you got your hands dirty? Whether you like gardening or painting or cooking, um, how long has it been since you've grounded yourself? One of my friends tells me that there is a major power in walking outside barefoot. Um, it's called grounding. And a part of it is you get energy from the ground. I love to go walking on the beach barefoot. And I don't care if it's 40 degrees outside. <laughs> I'll take my shoes off and put my feet in the water. And here in Massachusetts, the water is pretty much always freezing cold. So you just kind of get used to it. But little things like that will help a lot um, with things that you're struggling with, especially when you talk about your intuition. If there's something that you're really struggling with with your intuition, if you are looking at making a big life change or you're pouring your heart out in some kind of type of creative work, whether it's writing or something else that's creative. Um, when you get stuck, a good thing to do is to engage your extroverted sensing, sensing, to do something to get your hands dirty, to go and be around other people for a while, even if it's just for an hour or two. That will help you a lot. So you just watched that video and I'm sure you enjoyed it. If you want some more amazing information about INFJs, check out these videos right now. I'll see you there.